Hi, this is your Sapil Bharatiya and we are here at Cuban and Cloud and Econ in London and we have with us once again Sean Amara, CTO at Mirante. Sean, it's great to have you back on the show. It's great to be back. Always good to see you. It's always good to see you as well. And as we always start the show with, tell us about the vibe here at the conference from the lens, no pun intended, lens of Mirantis. Well, Mirantis is here at the show and announcing a new product. So there's a lot of excitement. Um, you know, we've, we've gotten back into our open source vibes again with the announcement of K-Zeros being in the CNCF sandbox, which is very, very exciting for us. It's been a while since we've been in that position. Um, so far, so good. You know, it just opened up this morning. Yesterday, the AI day was a lot of fun, a lot of interest. Obviously, that's the hot topic at the moment. Um, but we've got a big team here and very, very excited to talk to more people about what we're doing and just see where open source is going in this world, especially around Kubernetes. Yeah, which is also exciting. You have Randy now, a part of our team, and you folks have gone full-blown full with support for open source, releasing a lot of uh, products, services, as part of open source. We'll talk about all of that, but let's just get some of the base things out. Any announcements here at the KubeCon? So the biggest announcement for us is k zeros has been donated to the CNCF. It's now in the CNCF sandbox. Um, our Cordon project was released beginning of this year, very much focused on multi-cluster management um, and service management for Kubernetes at large scale. And then the big, big one is our Cordon AI um, collaboration with G-Core. Um, I believe we'll be talking to you about that in the next few days. Um, Mirantis has got a full stack inference solution on top of Cordant. That's a big part of the way we're looking at the future. Uh, really addressing this new, very complex workload that seems to be taking the world by storm at the moment and helping people navigate that journey. Let's just focus on Cordant for a bit. Uh, of course, we covered uh, it in past when it was open source, just, but for the sake of reminding folks and what is it all about. So Cordant, we're calling it a, a distributed container management environment or distributed container management platform. The focus on Cordant is to solve the problem of managing Kubernetes at scale, but it's more than just Kubernetes for us. The idea for us is we're taking Kubernetes and using it as the, in, the abstraction layer for all infrastructure management of the future, allowing customers to build a single environment across multiple providers, both on-prem, so from bare metal management and complex bare metal management right up to the public cloud solutions, um, manage the services that make Kubernetes useful, and prepare a stable open environment for them to put their workloads on top of. And that's the key functionality of what we're trying to do with Cordant. The Cordant ecosystem is growing very, very quickly. Um, so we have our base systems, which do the cluster management, the service management, and the observability. And then a wide range of partners who've joined the Cordant efforts, um, layering on their Kubernetes tools and capabilities on top of the platform. When we look at Mirantis, of course, I can go all the way to OpenStack. And now OpenStack is also part of you know, uh, this. So it's like the umbrella is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so if you look at the old days and new days, you know, one of the biggest challenges folks face, and of course, the political landscape is also changing, running the AI workloads efficiently. So talk a bit about what role can Mirantis play in that space, especially when we look at the global market. The key play for Mirantis there right now and where we're able to help our customers grow faster is all of these new AI workloads are dependent on very, very specialized hardware, specialized networking, complex RDMA networking, so InfiniBand networking. You know, if you're in the NVIDIA space, the NVLink systems, um, this is all massive, massive levels of complexity. And to a certain extent, infrastructure people have started to disappear out of our, out of our industry. A lot of people in the application space, you know, we, we often say developers and data scientists don't care about infrastructure. And we see this time and time again. We are infrastructure specialists. This is what we've been doing for the last, well, we, the company's been incorporated for 24 years. You know, for the last 24 years, we've focused on infrastructure. We came through the OpenStack days. We have that experience of doing it at scale. We're solving these problems of running these complex systems at scale to enable the core platforms that support the complexity of AI workloads. We also strongly believe that the future of AI is a lot of traditional logic-based applications are gonna disappear. It's gonna be machine learning, lots of small model-based machine learning, and LLMs, of course, the big, big models doing you know, all the language interface, the human interface to the systems. That is a lot of complexity. 
So layering up the stack, we're, we're solving for the infrastructure management problems, the networking problems, the resource access problems. GPUs are still scarce resources. Despite you know, the big companies buying 30,000, 100,000 GPU cores, those are getting sucked up by you know, the open AIs and people like that. So if we can make it easier for companies to get access to GPU resources globally, both their own, make it easy for them to serve them, consume them, but also make, through our open ecosystem, provide access to GPU resources from the other smaller cloud providers and larger cloud providers. That way we're accelerating growth in that space. The second layer that we're really focusing on, is, again, the partnership with G-Core, um, we have taken their inference layer, their inference management layer that allows for the distribution of language models and machine learning models very, very simply. So removing the learning curve um, and layering that on top of our platforms and making it simpler for you to access machine learning. And how does, you know, Corden being released in the open source help in adopting the market? Because once again, you and I come from open source, you know, Root, so it does play a big role in companies making decisions there. That's a fantastic point. I mean, for us, open source is key to adoption. It's key to people feeling comfortable with using systems and preventing locking. You know, we all, we've all heard about the challenges that have been caused by changes in licensing with big brands. Um, you know, those are creating a lot of uncertainty, a lot of fear in the industry. That is caused by lock-in from proprietary software. Now, I'm not anti-proprietary software, but I, I strongly believe that the core infrastructure software that we run our world on needs to be open. And that is to give people optionality. It's to ensure that we can compose the systems as we need them. Um, we don't believe in dictating architecture. We believe in collaboration of architecture. We believe that people need to have control of their own destiny. And this is what open source brings. And so by building our tools using open standards, we're here at Cloud Native. You know, CNCF is driving standards through open source. And those standards allow us to collaborate better as a, as a community. It also allows us to innovate faster because we can stand on the shoulders of the giants who've come before us, learn, and not have to reinvent the wheel every time we go forward. And so that's the value of open source to us. It's core to our ethos. Everything we're doing moving forward as a company is in the open source space. We lost our way a little bit, but we've come back from that full tilt. Uh, K-Zeros is a good example of that. Cordant is fully open source and will remain so. Um, and we're constantly looking at how we can add more of our products. You know, we're Big Tatia, we launched Raccoon, which is our OpenStack operator um, at the end of last year. You know, Raccoon can run on top of Cordant. It, it's a OpenStack as Kubernetes. Um, so this is all part of our, our approach for the future. And you've also contributed your project into CNCF sandboxing. Uh, talk a bit about what roadmap you have, because now it's part of CNCF, so that means there's a big ecosystem where Players will work on it, uh, but uh, when are you looking at it being graduated or what kind of trajectory you're looking at for? So we're already starting to create great relationships because of it being in the CNCF sandbox. So the Kairos project, the Kairos project has recently accepted um, k zeros as one of its default Kubernetes options. Um, we would like it to graduate as soon as we can. Um, the process of getting into the CNCF has been incredible, working with the CNCF, you know, we've had deep relationships, but you know, strengthening those relationships with the CNCF and just working with a community of people who are giving us feedback to make it better. Um, as we move forward, we intend to donate more of our capabilities into the CNCF and, and other communities, also all under the Linux Foundation. Um, again, with the intention of helping to create and set standards that are open. Um, and not lock people into a path that doesn't suit their architectural needs. Since, as you mentioned, that you know you lost your path for a bit, you're coming back uh, to open source community. You know, what message you have for companies, whether they are new startups or established, why they should embrace this open source philosophy? Open source philosophies for me are multifold. Um, the first one is. Everything I've been saying now about giving your customers choice and optionality is very, very important. If you look at open source from the point of view of what it does for you as a business, so if we look at businesses who are in the open source space, 
it provides you a way of getting known for the value of what you do. So you're selling on your capability and your quality, not on some hidden feature set. So that becomes very, very important. Open source also provides longevity. And especially for smaller companies, it provides a, a safety net for those organizations that decide to work with your product. They are still going to buy support and services from you. I think that's an important thing. The fact that it's open is, does not mean free. Open means optionality. It means that you can also contribute back in. We have a large number of customers who have got incredible technical resources inside their companies. For them, focusing on doing everything themselves, but by collaborating with those customers and allowing them to contribute directly into the code that makes their environment work, it creates a long-term partnership with customers. And so those are the key things around open source. Um, communities mean standards as well. And you get to get more eyes on the problem. And so that's another big driver for the drive towards open source. Every problem is being solved in a dozen different ways. Why reinvent the wheel? And the way I look at open source, I think, Tony, is that you have so much confidence in your product, you know, that you really do not fear that just by releasing any, because, you know, that means if there is a better player who will come and, but you, I mean, that's, I have so much confidence in my, you know, just, I, I, I always compare with food analogy. Mm -hmm. Anybody can make a burger. Yes. You know, the ingredients are the same, but you have so much confidence as Gordon Rom say that what I make will be awesome with the same ingredients. Yeah. So that actually be, releasing your code in open source actually shows more confidence in your, not only code, but Fabulous your team. analogy. So that is, now I all want to go back to Gordon, you know, mm -hmm. as a project. can you also talk a bit about who is using it or if you have any case study, success story where you solve somebody's problem and yeah. it was incredible? We've had an incredible uptake on it since we launched the project. I mean, officially we only launched at the beginning of this year. The project's been around for a little bit longer. Um, we have customers in production with it already, which is quite, quite exciting. Uh, we have one big customer, a cloud services provider, a sovereign AI GPU provider out of the Netherlands called Nebel. Nebel has deployed Cordant on top of their environment to manage the deployment of Kubernetes clusters, as well as virtualization, so OpenStack clusters, um, and the inference layer, um, providing sovereign GPU services within the Netherlands. Um, and a big key part for them is the ability for them to dynamically build environments for multi-tenanted customers on the fly, fully, fully um, declarative, um, but with full hard multi-tenancy in their environments. This allows them to leverage those GPU resources, which are incredibly expensive, and get value on top of that that they can pass on to their customers really, really quickly. And that's the value for them at the moment. Nebel has been a fantastic partner on this journey for us. I'm, I'm an, I want to call them out because they really have been super collaborative, super helpful in this journey. And it's wonderful to have customers like that who understand where the future is going, are able to support projects like this, see the value of open source in their environments. Strong, strong technical teams who are getting stuck in but see the value of what they need to do for customer value. They've taken Cordant, we've overlaid Cordant on top of their existing environment. We're able to do net new with it, but also leverage the existing infrastructure resources and orchestrate those resources. And that's been the value of Cordant for them. And just simply move faster, not having to do simple things like deploy a Kubernetes cluster from scratch. It's a couple of lines in a config file and you have a Kubernetes cluster. Config file, it's a Kubernetes CRD object, but I think the point is there. Um, and that's been the value to them. Move faster, build value faster, get workloads onto their infrastructure faster. Speed all the way. I also want to talk about, since we're talking open source and given the current political landscape, uh, a few uh, days ago, I think in Sweden, you know, they are trying to build a hyper cloud and, you know, uh, the, they got millions of dollars there. And I feel that, you know, folks would try to get some sovereignty, you know, locally. What role do you see open source and Mirantis play there in enabling uh, these players in having, you know, I mean, of course, a lot of open source allows for a lot of cross, you know, but just talk about the role that you say open source and Mirantis will play in this space. So what we're seeing is a lot of is, first off, a lot of these cloud 
um, providers want independence. They want the ability to control their own destiny. And I mean, I've spoken about that earlier. Open source for them is allowing them to accelerate and move a lot faster. They're not having to learn from scratch every possible capability, but it's also giving them choices that they wouldn't necessarily have if they locked into a specific vendor model. The other key thing, service providers have different needs to enterprises. There's a lot of crossover, but service providers need things like hard multi-tenancy. They need often specialized tuning. They need to deal with problems in a different way. They, they have much tighter timeframes. Open source gives them that ability to control their own destiny. You know, we often use the term scratch their own itch. They have smart people who can directly contribute into that open source and solve problems a lot faster. The other thing that it does is it removes the concern of companies being impacted by the political landscape. You know, we, we saw the end of Privacy Shield a few years ago in Europe. Um, this makes companies be able to operate independently regardless of the political scene, regardless of changes in corporate ownership, because you can step back from that as you need to. The growth of sovereign clouds in Europe is an opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity for companies like Mirantis. It's an opportunity for Cordant. Um, it's also an opportunity for us to look at this world differently, learn from what's been done before, um, do things more efficiently. We have different restrictions in Europe. We have a huge number of different regulations we have to deal with. You know, I, I, I split brain. I split my time between the US and Europe. So I see a lot of those differences all the time. Um, but I think in general, for the world, open source allows us to be less dependent on single regions, single organizations, and spread the risk of running infrastructure globally. And I think that's critical for the success of the future of organizations um, and the future of where our resources are coming from. Um, you know, the whole power consumption for GPUs, a whole nother debate we can have Let's another day. Let's not get there, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I see it as an opportunity both for the companies who want to become cloud service provider. I see it for opportunity for companies like Mirantis who are building software in that space. Um, I see it as an opportunity for organizations that are trying to grow and build new um, services, new products that leverage these infrastructures. Ultimately, I think it's a very positive thing. Um, probably a little overdue. No, you're absolutely right. Uh, now, before we wrap this up, uh, of course, uh, there are a lot of things in your pipeline that you cannot talk about, but if you can tease or just tell what folks should be looking at, you know, in the future. So, bare metal management within Cordant, um, imminent, lots of good things coming there. Um, lots of work being done to better collaborate with the community around application deployment, application management. Um, greater stability in the core of Cordant, um, more options within Cordant itself. See, Cordant's my baby, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on that. Um, later in the year, or very, very soon, we'll be offering an enterprise support model around Cordant. Um, that's imminent as well. The enterprise support, which is really important, is a support layer on top of the open source, handling security, handling SBOM, handling software supply chain. We're not, offering a different set of code for the enterprise, and that's very important to us. Um, more announcements in the AI space coming. I'll tease that. Um, and then the partnerships that we have, we'll be announcing more partnerships coming up very, very soon. Some very interesting ones. Sean, once again, thank you so much for joining me today. And of course, talk about Gordon, Kizuros, you know, of course, Raccoon, and the whole, how the whole landscape is changing, political landscape, and which is, I think it's in general, as you said, you know, the, the ownership of your own computing is the essence either mm -hmm. way, respective of the political landscape and how open source and Mirantis enable that. That's excellent. Thank you for sharing all those great insights. And as usual, I look forward to chat with you again. Thank you. It's always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you.